my name is Chris Wall with the Wall Network and today we're going to go over the advanced features that come with the Supermicro model MBD-X9SCM-F. That's a mouthful. In other words, the boards that I use to build my home lab servers. Let's dig right into some really cool features that come with these boards. They have um, both remote console and IPMI built into them. And I often write about how cool that is and how I won't build servers without it uh, after experiencing servers without it in the past. So let's go over kind of why that is and, and how awesome this stuff really is. So you'll notice right now I'm logged into uh, uh, one of my lab servers uh, in the Wall Network Home Lab. And you get a little bit of information right off the bat. You get a little screen so you can see if you got a purple screen and, and, and whatnot. You get the IP, etc. Uh, you can also control the power from IPMI. So right off the bat, the very first summary screen gives you some pretty cool features that you would normally find in, in a more enterprise class server and uh, not typically in a white box. So this is completely built in. There's no driver or anything installed. Uh, pretty cool. I also will make the comment that I'm not actually using the dedicated uh, IPMI port. There's a port that just handles IPMI if you want. I'm actually sharing NIC1 uh, with IPMI so to avoid consuming more ports than necessary. So you have the choice. You can plug in a dedicated out-of-band IPMI, which is probably the best way to go. But in a home lab, I've opted just to share it on NIC1. And that's seamless. It just, if it detects nothing in the IPMI port, it switches over to NIC1. And you can control that, but it's a nice feature. So let's go over a couple cool things. First off, uh, probably not as a big deal in an ESXi environment, but you have all your sensors in here, so I can see, you know, the various, how fast fans are spinning and voltages and things like that. And, and everything looks good. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the real power from this box comes from the remote control and the console redirection. And I'll pop that up. It won't, I won't be able to completely fill the screen with it, but you'll get to see how that works. And uh, as much as I hate accepting anything from Java, I'm going to go ahead and allow that to run. So you can see, uh, let me put that right about there. Very quickly, it pops right up. Uh, there's really no delay. You get a lot of neat features in here. You can do uh, remote media inserts. And this was obviously translated from a different language, so it's a little goofy. But all you have to do is just say CD-ROM and ISO. Uh, select, we want an ISO file. Open it up. I'm going to grab it off of my file server. Let's say I want to insert one of these Windows ISOs. I'm not going to do it, but we'd insert it. Uh, and then plug in is basically insert, and plug out is remove. Uh, and the connection status would say, all right, you're good, the, the drive's in there, you can go nuts. That's actually how I installed ESXi on this server. And you'll notice it's pretty peppy. If I press F2 here, I can get in very quickly. There's, there's no video delay. There's your typical kind of drawing um, goofiness that you get pretty much from any KVM, but nothing, nothing bad. You can see I'm, as I'm clicking, it moves very quickly. So uh, very, very awesome. I'm a big fan. It's nice if you ever goof it up, which sometimes in a lab I, I do that on purpose. You can jump in here really quick and log in and fix it without having to bust out a crash card or anything. Uh, so that's neat. And last I wanted to show you if you're actually working with the firmware of the board. Let me get that closed there. Uh, there's a maintenance section here where you put it into an um, update mode and using IPMI, you can update the, the firmware on the board uh, without any weird boot floppies or sacrificing chickens and doing voodoo witch doctor dances and whatever it takes. Uh, I have other servers that uh, it is quite a pain in the butt. Uh, so all in all, what you're paying for with a board of this caliber is definitely these kind of features that over time, you know, it's an operational savings of, of your time and your frustration. And to me, that's worth the extra couple bucks to get out of the desktop grade and into the kind of entry-level server grade. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it's been educational. If you'd like to see more of the same, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my blog at wallnetwork.com. Thank you.